So 62 and 64 say for shareholders meetings, remember at shareholders meetings they are going to be either passing ordinary resolutions or special resolutions, only those two. Before a meeting, if it's a private company, they have to give 10 days notice to all shareholders that there's going to be this meeting. If it's a public company or non-profits, they have to give all shareholders 15 days notice. So now when you are going to audit a decision that has to be made, you're going to want to inspect the date of the notice to make sure that it was within these two criteria. Then we said they have to have a quorum, which is a number of people present for this meeting to actually be considered a live meeting for it to be able to take place. The quorum for your shareholders is 25% of the voting rights that are entitled to vote on the matter. And where they have more than two shareholders, three people also have to be present. So there's two quorums for shareholders that you are going to have to check are achieved before the decision is made. Okay, so if they have, if all shareholders are entitled to vote on the decision, it means there's 100% that are entitled to vote, so then 25% of the voting rights need to be present. So literally, if one shareholder has this 25%, that person needs to be at the meeting, and then the meeting can take place with the voting rights quorum. However, there still needs to be the physical person's quorum, so now they'll have to have two more people doesn't matter what their percentage voting right is in order for this meeting to be held. Okay. And then, depending on how severe the decision is, they can either pass an ordinary a resolution, which is more than 50% of the voting rights present. So more than 50% of who are there or if it's a special resolution, at least 75% or more of the people that are there. So let's say we've got an example. Quorum is 25% and three people need to be there. Okay, so let's say they've got people or shareholders that have got 50% of the voting rights present and there are four people, four of them there, four shareholders. Okay, so let's say they each have 15% and one has five. And that's how we get to that 50% of the voting rights present. Then, if they are passing an ordinary resolution, only 26% or more need to vote in favour. And how do I get that, guys? Well, they've got 50% of the voting rights present. In order for an ordinary resolution, I need more than 50% of those to vote in favour. So 50% of those would be 25%, and so more than that would be 26 and above. Because remember now, your resolutions are only based on voting rights. So add your voting rights. Or, if you're passing a special resolution, then seventy-five percent or more need to vote in favour. So thirty-seven and a half of the voting rights need to be in favour or more. Again, how did I work that out? I said they've got 50% present. So I need to have 75% or more of those 50% voting in favour and 37.5 is 75%.
Okay, so note, look how, how crucial being at that meeting is. Because look at that quorum, is 25% constitutes a meeting provided you've got more than three people. And so if I had here 25% of the voting rights, and literally we had five, 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 We'll make this 15. So one's got 15, and then we've got each other have five. Then only 13% of the voting rights would pass an ordinary resolution. Okay, so it's not 50% in total. It's 50% of the voting rights present at the meeting. And same with your special resolution. Oh, sorry guys, please update that red OR to be SR. Your special resolution is the 75% or more. Let's look at those two. Ordinary resolutions, more than 50% of the voting rights exercised at the meeting. So that's how we know that it is the quorum at the meeting. And examples of where ordinary resolution, so we're going to look at this just now, removing a director, approval for a decision where a director has a financial interest and was involved in that decision, and approval of the first company secretary. For special resolutions, amending the memorandum of incorporation we've already discussed. Ratifying directors actions where they were in excess of authority we've already discussed. Proving specific issues of shares, so when it is a share to a related party or director. Section 44 and 45, financial assistance for the purchase of shares or financial assistance to a director or related party we've already done. And we're going to get to section 66 which is your director's remuneration. Okay, so just so you can see, we've already addressed where special res resolutions are required. So when you get to, are required to discuss auditing the amendment of the memorandum of incorporation, you're going to have to say, you need to inspect the minutes of meetings to ensure that notice was given 10 days before the meeting if they were private or 15 days before if they were public. Inspect the minutes of meetings to ensure that the quorum was present. So, more than 25% of the voting rights were present and three or more persons were there that represent that voting right. And inspect that more than or 75% of the voting rights present voted in favour of that decision. So, three marks here for just working through notice, quorum and the specific decision itself. So let's look at section 65. Note here, first point, every resolution of a shareholder is either an ordinary or a special. So you're only going to have those two decisions passed. Why? Because majority are always going to have to vote on a decision and so the least stringent requirement is an ordinary which is greater than 50% which is majority. Okay, and then it says to you that there must be sufficient information accompanying that resolution, why they made it, and then they talk about the two. So ordinary is more than 50, and then they say, you can amend that. It can, you can choose an ordinary to be 60%. But you can't amend it when it is for the removal of a director. Okay, it has to be the same percentage. It has to be more than 50 and that's it. They can have a higher one, but just to note that there must always be at least a 10% margin between the special and the ordinary. So if you choose to have 60% as your ordinary resolution and 75% for your special resolution, there is a 15% margin, so it's fine. But you then can't make your ordinary resolution 70% because then your margin is 5, which is not acceptable. 
has spatial resolution 75%. And then they give you a list of where spatial resolution is required. So if you can't find a section in the Companies Act, but you know that um, you know what they're doing, the decision they're trying to make. So you can see that they are trying to give a loan to a related party, but you can't find what section is applicable. Then come to here and see special resolution quickly. Is it does it fall under any of these? And then you'll see, oh maybe it does, because I know exactly what a special resolution is required for. Okay, and then let's see. Financial assistance. Okay, so maybe. Okay, next we'll look at the directors. 